And I understand from what's been testified to the Forest Service and the BLM, you want very much to uh, work on the issue of climate change. I was uh, uh, informed by the immediate past director of NASA that they have found that the moon's orbit is changing slightly, and so is the Earth's orbit around the sun. Uh, we know there's been a significant solar flare activity. Um, and so is there anything that the National Forest Service or BLM can do to uh, change the course of the moon's orbit or the Earth's orbit around the sun? Obviously, that would have profound effects on our climate. I would have to follow up with you on that one, Mr. Gomert. Yeah. Well, if you figure out a way that you in the uh, Forest Service can make that change, I'd like to know. Uh, also, just to uh, put on your... Two? One minute, yeah. Mr. Speaker, I yield one minute to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Gomert. Gentleman from Texas is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it was good to hear the majority leader say this is about politics. Uh, we knew that. But for some of us, it is about principle. And if it were about taxation without representation, I would have a slew of Democrats co-sponsoring the bill I've been filing for many terms to eliminate federal income tax in the District of Columbia. But I was told years ago, we're not going to join in with your bill because it'll weaken our chance to, to get a representative full voting from D.C. That's what this has been about. Uh, for some of us, principle is a big deal. When the Bush Justice Department was violating constitutional rights, some Republicans got furious. When the Obama administration did that, they circled the wagons and protected. This is about principle for some of us. And we got a tiny taste when the mayor of D.C. of an opposite party of President Trump wasn't sure she was going to provide the, the police to protect the White House. This is about the Constitution and principle. Vote against this. Gentlemen, yields back. Uh, gentleman from I'm pleased to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Gomert. Gentleman's recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I looked at the video enemy and was trying to figure out. I, I couldn't see. I'm told if you stop it frame by frame, you can see what uh, Democrat friends are talking about. I, I couldn't see it. I tried to freeze frame, and I saw what I was told was supposed to be our colleague, uh, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez. I was insulted for her. If that's supposed to be her, that's really unfair. But I didn't see the violence being talked about. We should not condone violence. But the reason it's so hard to sit here and listen to the condemnation from the other side, Madam Speaker, is because when there was violence against us, there was no condemnation. My wife and I went to a speech at the White House, and I've yet to hear anybody condemn the attempted violence on us. We were chased for two blocks. Now, Ron Paul was on TV when he was chased because he had cameras and, civil and secret service around him. We didn't have that. And if it weren't for a guy popping up and opening a locked door, we would have, I told Kathy, look, I'm afraid they're going to get here before this door is opened. You run on down to, to, to Pennsylvania. There are cops down there. They'll be beating on me. You just get away. Nobody's condemned all that violence that I've ever heard. This is where we ought to be able to come together. Oh, and by the way, people that committed violence, did crimes in this building, need to be punished. But for many of them, the most serious crime was obstructing an official session of Congress. Well, it turns out, I didn't know it was a crime in 2016, but most of the Democratic Party committed a felony right here in this chamber by obstructing an official session of Congress, not six hours like January 6th, but Gentlemen's 26 hours. Let's come Gentlemen together and agree on what Gentlemen is really violent crime. Lady from California. 
The gentleman from Ohio is recognized. Speaker, I would yield three minutes to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Gomer. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, for years, we've been hearing what we're hearing today. Look, we just want the same rights everybody else had. But we also heard for years, we just want to live and let live. And I've got news for all of my friends across the aisle that don't know. Uh, there is a right to the marriage you're claiming you need this bill for that the Supreme Court's already said you got. It's there. So what this bill, the so-called Equality Act, is really about, it's not about giving rights. This is about taking away rights. You got the rights. But this is saying that part of the First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, that's got to go. And just like my friend read from page 25, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993, that's got to go. You can no longer, after this bill, you can no longer use that as a defense. When we sue your church, we sue you, a preacher, male or female, it doesn't matter. We're coming after you. If we sue a rabbi, you can't hide behind the First Amendment or this Religious Freedom Restoration Act. It won't help you because we're saying you don't have those rights the Constitution gave you. That's all RIFRA was to begin with. It was just codifying what was in the Constitution. And I've thought so much about my late dear friend, Bishop Harry Jackson. He and I have stood outside this Capitol together for years trying to protect Christian rights. And I miss Harry, and I think about him a lot. And let me say, as not as articulately, but for heaven's sakes, you've got these rights. Allow people that believe what Moses said when he said, a man shall leave his father and mother, a woman leave her home, the two will become one flesh. Let them be able to practice the teaching of Moses. When Jesus was asked about marriage, he said, he quoted Moses verbatim. Please allow Christians that believe what Jesus said to practice that. Allow preachers that took oaths and practice it. Allow them to do that. Don't take away the rights the Constitution gave. And don't take away decades of rights that women have worked for. Gentlemen's time has expired. And just give it away to men. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman, gentleman reserves. Mr. Gentleman Speaker. Pennsylvania. Mr. Speaker, I yield one minute to the gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Raskin. The gentleman from Maryland is recognized.